Hello YouTube and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to do a review and first look on the Carbon Zion. This is the DLX, but that's just the accessory pack that came with it. So it's just a Carbon Zion that we're comparing in our mid-price reviews. So to start you off, this bow weighs 3.3 pounds, so they say, which would easily make it the lightest bow in its class. But let's see how close they are to that little number here. Oops, sorry, I got a resetter. There it goes. Who's on kilograms? My goodness. There we go. It's early. Bear with me. So this is weighing out at 3.7. So that's quite a bit heavier than published. However, I do have to say there's a rest on here. And this little orbital dampener, I guarantee, is not on there when they test it. And these do have a decent amount of weight to them. So it's probably, it's probably 3.4, 3.5, really, just being fair. Um, the axle to axle length on this bow is supposed to be 31, so let's take a look at that. Oh my goodness, this, this does not want to stay still. There we go. So, am I at the screw edge? Yeah, 31. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty spot on there. Um, our uh, draw length availability on this bow, it's all built into the cam. It's 25 and a half to 30 and a half, and it does have a comfort and performance setting. Um, for these tests that we're going to do, we are going to test this on performance uh, because the other bows that we're comparing against don't have that option. So we're just going to put it on its most efficient setting, which is how they would have speed tested it anyway. Speed says it's 335, and the brace height is 6 and 5 eighths. So let's check that out. No, six and five eighths. That's spot on. So uh, the predecessor to this bow was the Carbon Icon, and the only real difference between this bow and the Icon is the the grip is actually contoured quite a bit more. Outside of that, it's basically the same bow. Very little change. So um, let me fire a couple arrows out of this. I'm assuming it's going to feel very similar to the the uh, original, which I have shot a lot. But I'll let you know what I think. So this is at 70 pounds and 30 inches with a 350 grain arrow, just like every other thing we test. It cycles pretty darn smooth. Um, no humps at all. It's stouter in the front end than most. Um, it does have some felt vibration, but it dissipates very, very, very quickly. So you'll feel the initial thud and you'll actually feel the bow leave your hand a little bit. Like there's a little bit of movement in it. Um, but once it comes to rest against your front four fingers, the vibration's already gone by the time it gets there. So that's a pretty efficient removal of vibration. Let's try this again. Yeah, that's a really good draw force curve for a mid-priced bow. I wanna say this bow's $700 if I remember right. Um, Yeah, there's, there's more forward movement in this bow than the Torx XT that we tested yesterday. Um, but the Torx XT had quite a bit more longevity on the vibration. Um, where this bow is fires, you feel it, and then it's gone. Um, I would also say this bow probably pulls a little smoother than the XT. Uh, but we will actually do a shoot off between those and the one other one that we're going to test here. But Yeah. Now, I have shot a Bowtech for, personally for five years, so I may feel a little biased to the style and draw force curve, but this does feel like it pulls quite a bit easier for me. So much so that I'll be surprised if it's not slower than the XT because it just does feel smoother. So let me go grab those arrows. 3 more. This one I'm really going to grip the bow hard and see if I can feel the vibration just a little bit better. So this may not have the same draw force curve at a shorter draw length, but at this draw length, this actually feels really good. Yeah, um, that, that vibration dissipates really fast, and it really surprises me not having any string silencers on here anywhere, that it dissipates that fast, because usually a lot of that is the string or cable movement after it goes off. Uh, this bow feels pretty darn good. more 
yeah that's pretty darn good like i said there's there is some vibration all right here's our speed test looking for 335 feet a second on the carbon zion at 70 pounds 30 inches with a 350 grain arrow let's go Three seventeen. Three seventeen. Three seventeen three times. So I would have to say that's a very consistent speed. We'll have to give it three seventeen, which is eighteen feet slow. That's a lot. Um, that is one. That is the biggest variance we've found in a mid-price bow yet. Although we haven't shot the third one, we're going to shoot. Um, so that's a, a bit disappointing, um, but not exactly surprising for a cam system that really hasn't been changed in like. 10 years. I mean, it's basically the same bow since the night. Yeah, there's small changes, but it's the same base design. So it's not exactly shocking that it's not, you know, blowing the doors off in speed. Uh, feels doing real good, but uh, overall speed seems to be very lacking in this bow. So those are my thoughts on this. Head on over to PodiumArcher.com for all your archery needs. $99 and up is free shipping. If there's stuff you're looking for that you can't see, please message us. Let us know if we're allowed to ship it. We'll get it on there and get it shipped to you as quick as we can. Ship all over the country. Um, check back for our next review. We'll be on the PSE Embark. Uh, and then we'll do a showdown between the three to try to tell you which one we actually think is the best head-to-head. -head. Uh, hit like, hit subscribe. Keep uh, checking the comments down below and add your own. Let us know what you think. Love to hear the feedback. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent. I love it all. So thanks for getting back to us. But more importantly than anything, thanks for watching.